So I've got an unboxing to do. Let's get to it. So as you see here, I have a fairly large box. What's in this box? Well, we're going to open this up right now and find out. We have a box inside of a box. That's what we have. Opening of box number two. So starting off, we have a thank you from CT Sounds, yeah. Don't forget to leave us a review. I will, thank you very much. Eric has a CT Sounds sticker, a couple of them. And then you have the owner's manual. Who needs these, right? So what do we have today? CT Sounds subwoofer, 12 inch, 650 watts. Whoever said subwoofers are created equal are full of shit. All right, so I'm going to get into this in a little bit and compare notes on the Pioneer subwoofer that is inside my Saturn right now. So whenever I'm in my vehicle, I kind of like to have the tunes with me. You know, be able to listen to either MP3s or CD or whatever I can link up the car stereo to by Bluetooth or plugging in. Uh, it's kind of nice to have your music with you or your music collection with you, especially on those long trips. And I kind of like to, you know, have some nice clarity as far as sound goes. I like to be able to turn it up when I want to, um, you know, drive the neighbors crazy, whatnot. So I picked up the Pioneer TS A300B, which is a loaded enclosure, ported, and it works pretty good. It's a got a 500 RMS rating. It's at two ohms, and uh, was it say like 1500 watts peak? So one of the things that I never do is I never go by the peak uh, output or of anything. Okay, now if this thing can handle 1500 watts, all right, it probably did before it blew up, at least one time. So they can call it, you know. 1500 watts peak. I go by RMS, which in this case it's 500 watts RMS. Now, this is supposed to be a subwoofer, okay? And when you are buying a subwoofer, you know, you kind of want to look at the reviews of other people, what they say, how they say it, um, reading the descriptions of what you're buying so you know exactly how to match your amplifier to the speaker that you're getting and everything else and the reviews on this was pretty good as a whole system you know as the tsa uh 300 b loaded enclosure now this does not come with an amplifier so you're going to have to provide yourself with one so i've had it and i've been kicking around with it for a couple weeks now and uh yeah Notice a kind of a funny smell coming from the back of my vehicle and no it wasn't exhaust. I was overdriving this thing and it uh, kind of smoked the coil a little bit. Now as far as the coil goes on this subwoofer there is really no specifications that I found um, either online or in the listing for this type of an enclosure that comes preloaded. So. I can only go by kind of what I'm looking at here because uh, on some woofers uh, the cone could vary in size and the coil that's underneath the cone that's attached to a spider can also vary in size as well. So if you have a two inch cone or a two inch coil and say that cone kind of goes down smaller, uh, well you're not seeing that because the cone is attached to the spider 
and the coil is kind of sitting inside there attached to the cone. So you don't know if it's got a two inch, inch and a half, you know, can't see it. Now if I took the dust cover, dust cap, whichever would, uh, people would prefer to call it, off of this, I'll be able to see inside there and see what is going on. But this driver is not quite smoked yet. It still has some life in it. I just need to swap it out with an actual subwoofer. There's a lot of differences between this and an actual subwoofer that puts this in more of a category of an actual like woofer, like a home stereo woofer than an actual subwoofer. So first thing off I want to go over with this is, all right, it's got the uh, polypropyl polypropylene coated plastic cone all right now it is ribbed on the sides of the cone that those ribs basically produce uh different types of frequencies which isn't a bad thing and you'll see that a lot of home stereo subwoofers or woofers uh on three-way two-way enclosures now one of the things that i kind of noticed with this right away was beauty ring how to put a beauty ring on something right so there's no paper around the edges over here that lock down the surround around the driver itself which is not a big deal some subwoofers don't have that either they'll have either like a rubber piece that goes around it or it's bolted on to where you can remove the ring and also remove the whole drive of the subwoofer in case you blow it and you need to replace it now this has got a rolled uh, rubber surround on it, which is not that big of a deal. And it's beefy. It's got some thickness to it, but it has really no height to it, if you can see that. Another thing that puts this more in a category of a house speaker or woofer is the way that they don't interlace the leads into the spider underneath the cone. And... I don't like that because as this thing is moving, flopping around, you're also flopping around the wire and it can come disconnected or loose from the cone over here where it's kind of inside there. You can't really, can't really see it. Can you? I don't know if you can see it or not, but maybe you can, but you can actually break the connection, break the lead off of the cone itself. And now you're either missing a coil or you're missing both coils. Um, Another thing that I kind of noticed with this too is it's not a beefy surround at all. Usually these are layered and this surround inside here is really not layered and I can really flex it with my finger quite a bit. There's also really no excursion of this driver as you move it. Also, you know, it's kind of a nice basket and stuff, but where are the cooling vents? There's no vented pole piece on the back. It just has a cap over it. Now, another thing that puts this this driver for the TSA 300B uh, subwoofer enclosure preloaded is that the terminals that are on the back of it. Now, this is kind of like a home stereo type of terminal or a loudspeaker, full range speaker type of a terminal. The actual driver the actual subwoofer that this thing should have came with actually has push in uh, terminals that are made for like 12 gauge wiring. All right, this is kind of, these are kind of cheesy. If you can see that. You have a smaller one for your uh, negative and you have a larger one for your positive, which, um, yeah, doesn't work out very well as far as a subwoofer goes. Now, this thing was producing sound and it was producing sound pretty well the only problem with it was is that uh like i said it was overheating it was getting hot so i'm pushing 500 watts into it at two ohms so this thing should be able to handle 500 watts because it says it can handle 500 watts rms that's what i'm pushing to it now the amplifiers can be underrated so my amplifier that I have says that it's pushing uh, 500 watts um, RMS to the speakers at 2 ohms, which it could be like 524, 525, 550, you know, could even go up to be like 560 as far as the wattage goes that's coming out of that amp. Um, unless I test it, I won't know for sure. But yeah, this is not a... 
this is not a subwoofer. Even in, in another thing too is usually subwoofers are pretty tight. I can kind of bounce this around with my fingers pretty freely. So after removing the driver, I'm going to call it a driver because I still am not going to categorize it as a subwoofer. After removing the driver, I noticed that the wires inside of here is like a 16 gauge, you know, 16 gauge wires, you know, going to each terminals, set of terminals that are on the back of the driver, which is kind of not good because that adds resistance. So if I'm running a 500 watt amplifier at two ohms and I'm running a 12 gauge, uh, probably two feet of wire going to the back of the or side of the subwoofer cabinet, you know, I'm adding resistance feeding a heavier cable into a thinner cable and you already have resistance at the terminal. Why make it worse with smaller wiring? All right, so now I'm going to be pushing a little bit of air here. This is the 12 inch CT sounds 650 watt RMS 1300 watts peak and remember like I said it took 1300 watts to blow this thing up all right maybe the Pioneer took a little bit more as far as peak goes but this is going to be able to handle continuous wattage without overheating at least that's what it's supposed to do if this is a true subwoofer so the reviews on this thing was very nice. Uh, I'm going to be able just to throw this inside the enclosure that I already have without having to make a new one. Uh, the specs between this driver and the enclosure that uh, are pretty damn close. So I should be tuned properly. At least I hope so. So what makes this thing different than the Pioneer driver? Well, number one, heavy surround all right very heavy surround and if you can see this if i can hold it up right you can see the surround has a good excursion to it so this driver is going to be able to push and pull moving quite a bit of air now this driver also has what they call a silk stitching surround which just means that it's been stitched twice going around the driver locking in the surround to the actual cone now this cone is a fiber composite paper cone that's got a coating on there and it's got a plastic dust cap all right not a big deal now also it has a nice rubber gasket going around the edge of it so this could, could be installed two different ways I can either install it uh, top or bottom of an enclosure so this can go inside of an enclosure or I could drop it into an enclosure. It goes both ways. That Pioneer does not. Now, excursion on this thing is going to be really nice as far as uh, keeping this thing pretty cool at high volume. And, you know, although the Pioneer doesn't have a lot of the features this one has to make it a subwoofer, vents. Now, this is under the spider, so it's going to be moving some air in and out over here as the driver diaphragm or moves in and out now this also has a pole piece which is that hole right there to where it keeps the inside of the coil now on this I can actually see the coil inside of here so I can if it says this is going to be like a two and a half inch coil which it does uh, you can actually see it I can actually see the windings around the coil through the vent over here and that's proof that what they said this coil is unlike the Pioneer where you can't tell anything another thing is the terminals these are the 12 gauge wire can be put inside there. You push these things down and you put your wire inside there. Now another thing is, is the uh, leads are laced into the spider. I know I called it a surround before, but this what's inside of here is called a spider. And the spider is, I think it's double layered. It's pretty stiff, okay? You really can't push on it very well. And also this driver here, yeah, you're not really moving this thing by hand pretty, pretty far all right it's kind of tight so the overall of this driver here I'm going to be able to push the 500 watts into it maybe a little bit more at 2 ohms 
after I changed the wiring inside of the enclosure to suit this driver and shouldn't have a problem with overheating with the uh, surround being as tall as this thing is it's going to have a lot more excursion it's going to vibrate a lot more you know so your mirrors and you know the hairs in your nose are going to be tickling a little bit and your mirrors are going to be uh, forget about trying to look out of your mirror now the Pioneer did pretty good it wasn't bad um, I think if you had like a 450 watt amp or a 400 watt amp at 2 ohms uh, I think it would be able to handle a little bit better without overheating this is going to make sure that I'm not going to overheat it should be pretty damn pretty damn nice now overall as far as the weight of this thing goes this weighs this driver here by itself weighs if not a little bit more than the encl pioneer enclosure put together with the driver so yeah this has got some weight to it this is pretty heavy it's got a beefier magnet on it than what the pioneer has and uh, yeah so this really shouldn't be too much of a problem as far as overheating now I'm gonna have to break it in um, so that means I'm gonna be playing this thing for quite a few hours pretty loud and be pissing off a lot of people but uh, you gotta do what you gotta do right and uh, I think that's what ended up uh, showing me that the Pioneer really wasn't a suitable subwoofer driver uh, at 500 watts uh, because of the break-in period kind of uh, you know show me otherwise that it wasn't a very good driver although there's a lot of reviews that, that say otherwise but you know you kind of wonder what type of power they're actually running to that driver how they have that driver set if it's set properly if it's tuned properly uh, you know if, if they're using any type of a filters or chokes or or the crossover point you know it depends on where they have things set up as well now i keep mine at a uh crossover points that cut at 80 and uh that seems to be the sweet spot with the surrounding speakers as well so the surrounding speakers are cut to 80 and the subwoofer picks up 80 and beyond so yeah this is going to be nice and uh tomorrow i'll be putting this baby inside the vehicle and seeing how much pounding we'll be actually doing with this now i've been listening to a lot more like metal rock and, and classic rock and shit like that than, than bass music lately and uh you know i the bass music really drives these guys pretty hard and uh i really didn't want to like kill the pioneer subwoofer or woofer but uh, it looks like that that driver it's not dead yet but if I were to keep the way everything is set up the way I have it right now and keep playing at the volume that I would be playing it at um, it would be dead pretty soon this will handle that with no problem